first thought. Submit spirit, spirit to form form matter. matter. Our celestial humanity, humanity, humanity arrives, arrives awake, awake in a dream. dream. An inception of our reality. reality. So we so live. live. We love. We love. Face me dancing dance in our dreams. Some familiar. Some, familiar. Some, Some assumptions in the middle of cosmic compositions. compositions. In the irrelevance of time, time, we realize the past of the random and abstract. Learning the lesson that the, the brother of man, man is far more important than the ego of any individual. Imagination, Imagination becomes, becomes the sound, sound of thought, thought traveling, traveling at the speed of the heart. So we so paint, paint on the canvas of our ephemeral countenance with no color. A mathematic memory that lives in the eternity of a child child. So. I was chanting most of the day, and uh, I wanted to know, Narelle, can you tell us about sacred spaces, particularly the sacred space of fire, the sacred space of water, and the sacred space of earth? Represent transformation, cleansing, and healing, you know, across time. But for me, especially now, when you start talking about chanting, I believe that anywhere that you can be spiritual and take a moment for consciousness can become a sacred space, right? Because then the sanctity of the space and the sanctity of where you are is is the intent is, is up to the intention of the person that's having the spiritual moment, right? So I think about like for me when I am chanting, my altar is definitely a, a sacred space. Um, but when I'm going through some or if I'm out somewhere and in the moment I need to connect spiritually when I take a moment by myself in a corner to chant or engage that way then that becomes a sacred space for the moments that I occupy it for that purpose right um for me water especially the ocean so powerful um even before I became a Buddhist one of the things that I loved doing more than anything was going to the ocean um in the mornings and watching the sun rise over the Atlantic Ocean and really spending time in gratitude and appreciation for my life and for things that were happening for me at that time. And then I was able to go full circle um, when I went back to Florida for a friend's wedding and I was able to chant at the ocean and um, I, I chanted as a storm was coming in and I was able to really connect with the power of the water and the air and all of it together with the connection of the universal law of chanting was just super powerful so I guess to your question the natural elements are sacred for the purposes that they are and they have been 
but for me, sacred space is wherever I choose to have a sacred moment um, whenever I can. But I definitely have a dedicated space also for my spiritual practice, if that makes sense. You sound like you've got a lot on your mind right now. Yeah. I was embracing my celestial awareness, my celestial consciousness, my God knowledge, my uh, Sufi awareness, Buddhist practice. Cherokee and African roots. I captured all of that inside of a piece that I'm going to put this recording on. And uh, I've been traveling all morning. I watched the movie last night. It was a good movie. Friends suggested to me. Caught behind her eyes, and it was dealing with astral projection, and it just gave me awareness of the reality of that in a cinematographic way, and uh, ways that I was already aware of, and some of the things that happened in the movie that had happened to me before. And uh, I learned how to protect myself with the sacred space of fire, the sacred space of water, the sacred space of earth. Okay. I think water and fire are continuums. Uh, the sacred space of fire is a purifier. Water is also a purifier. You can either put fires out or heat waters up and create the steam, the transformation like you're talking about. Different states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. And I was just transversing through those stages and states in my mind. Uh, elemental uh, awareness and cosmic consciousness traveling and balancing thinking about different things is, uh, how we all evolve over time and what that entails okay how do you think how do you think uh how have you adjusted to your evolution and transformation over time? Well, I think evolution and transformation um, are adjustments of their own, right? It is our body or our mindset or our attitude adjusting to whatever the new stimuli or the new change agent is that we're encountering, right? So the act of evolving and the act of transforming is the organic way of adjusting to whatever our environment is at the time. But to your question, how have I adjusted, meaning my consciousness and how I am occupying that new space now? Um, I have 
made a point to be open more, very open to um, learning. Um, adjusting for me involves asking a lot of questions. I, I question everything now, just about, and not in a, not in a, I'm suspicious of everything way, but I question because I want to learn, right? And there's so much I don't know, and I'm encountering more things that I don't know every day. And the more I occupy time in my sacred space, meaning my chanting and my spiritual practice, the more the evolution takes place and the more questions I ask because what I'm chanting for is to become the best version of myself and to be able to help people to be happy. And in the quest of becoming, wanting to become better or raise my own vibration, the information is coming to me from various ways and I, I, I ask a lot of questions. And that's what helps me. It helps me to not be overwhelmed. Um, it makes me slow down in the process to become more conscious. Um, the, the act of asking a question is, 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 a, is a great thing for me. And so that's the biggest tool, I think, for me and my adjustment is asking questions and being open to learning. I mean, like with you, you talk about all kinds of um, concepts and spiritual ideas, and we have amazing conversations. But I, I ask you questions when, when you when you say things that I don't know or have not encountered or have not heard. Um, I ask, or I sit with you in a book <laughs> and I write it down to look it up later. <laughs> You know, either I'm asking you during the conversation or I'm asking in another way just to get the information so that I am more informed. So yeah. all of it relates to the Tao to the Tao. And the Tao is like a well. It's used but never used up. It's like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. It's hidden but always present. No one knows who gave birth to it. And it's older than God. Hmm. Although God has no birth record. So. Right. The Tao and God are one. That's an interesting concept. I've been enjoying the rays of the sun coming through my window. Mm -hmm. Contemplating on the blessings of daylight and the enjoyment of nightfall and the infinite in between that we've enjoyed over eons of time. And uh, just really being thankful for all the experiences here in this realm. Left. Yeah. The sun, the sun rays in the window are always welcomed. Whenever, I mean, I open my blinds up now every day. And that's a new thing for me, I think, since I moved here because I felt like um, I don't live in an upper apartment anymore, like a high rise. So I felt like at first, like I was kind of in a fishbowl. And so I, I wouldn't open my blinds all the way up very often, but. Lately, it has been much more important for me to receive the sun and daylight in its full manifestation has been more important to me than worrying about whether or not somebody was looking at my window, right? So, 
I've really come to appreciate the beauty of that and giving myself permission to live on the higher vibration. And it's wonderful. Yeah. I was also contemplating in the movie and they talked about going through doors and I looked at doors as barriers, some you can go through and some if 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 there's a door it's meant to pass through. Uh I don't think that all doors should be entered into without some trepidation. You know, but I think they all should be entered into for discovery, to learn what's on the other side so that you may uh, further evolve and grow. Uh, Because if there's something on the other side of the door you don't know about, one day you may uh, come across the information behind that door without entering and it may be detrimental to you. So I think on the conscious level, you should enter doors with caution for discovery to learn and know with the emphasis on caution. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's what do you think about that? Do you think some doors need to remain closed? I think you don't really know until you go through the door, unfortunately. Yeah. You don't know if something should be opened or closed until you open it, like a Pandora's box, right? Yeah. Um, But what I do know is if you go through the door, if you choose to open the door, and you have given yourself the tools to fortify yourself, then you know that whatever's on the other side, good or bad, because both are parts of life, um, that you'll be able to deal with it. So the choice is really, the choice is really the matter, right? Um, That is the moment where you either give in to fear or you don't. Mm. It's, it's the making of the choice is where the courageousness comes in. Mm. It doesn't matter what's on the other side. It matters that you evolve as a person to either make the decision to go forward or not. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>
Ooh.